Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, in a moment, after a word from our sponsors, we'll get into an episode of Boston Blackie. The original air date, November the 22nd of 1945, and the title is Blackie is Kidnapped. Before the show starts, I want to let you know about an offer from our sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to Audible.com slash try now to browse through their amazing and ever-expanding collection of audiobooks and audio programs. One book I might recommend you checking out, I'll be recommending this one through the month of November, is One Buried Caesar by Rex Stout. Michael Pritchard uh, does a great job reading all the Nero Wolf uh, books, and the vast majority of these are available on audible.com. One Buried Caesar is a personal favorite. It features the introduction of Lily Rowan, and it's also a case that takes Wolf and Archie Goodwin out of the city to solve a perplexing murder in rural New England. And Pritchard just does a fantastic job reading this. Of course, you can choose any book you want. Just go to audible.com slash try now to select your uh, free audiobook and you try out Audible. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series, Oh, and a Man's Wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Doc, how many cars do you want? I'll take three, boss. And make them good. One, two, three. As good as you'll get. Yeah? Hi, boss. Oh, Pete, come on in. Ah, you look sour, Doc. What's the matter, boss? Taking you again? Not yet. You might try cheating. If Doc cheats, he won't get thrown out of here like he was out of medical school. He'll get carried out. <laughs> Don't I know it? What do you know, Pete? Plenty. How much is Plenty. I've been trailing him since early this morning. He went to see the girl in jail, talked to her a long time. Think she told him? The way he went out of there, I'd say she told him everything. Well, that means we're ready for you to go to work, Doc. Anytime. If he knows, we'll know too. Doc says we can make him talk. We can't. But science can. Okay. Joe and I will go ahead with your plans, boss. Get going, then. Doc, you're sure this stuff of yours will work? Look. All you have to do is get me Boston Blackie. And now back to Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Coming up to floor nine, Joe. This is Blackie's floor. Ain't it a shame Blackie don't live up a little higher, Pete? <laughs> middle of the night, I have to climb stairs. Quit your griping. We had to walk up. Couldn't come up on the elevator and have somebody remember us. We're taking Blackie down this way, too. Huh? Sure. See, now, here's the front apartment. Down the hall this way. Come on. How do we know Blackie's home? Because I saw him come in before you got here. Shh. Near his door. I'll get to work on a lock, huh? Wait a minute. Let's try it first. It'll be open already. Ah, uh, no. Ah, uh, yes. Well, what do you know about that? I know we're in. You know, Blackie's smart enough to know that anybody wants to get in here will get in anyhow. So he leaves the door open to save splinters. Come on. Got the gag out? Sure. The blackjack, too. Better close the door. Sure. 
I guess Blackie's asleep, all right. That's the bedroom door. You know that joint could be. Yeah, there's only one other room outside of the kitchen. It's got to be the bedroom. I got the gag ready. Okay. There he is, in bed. Sleeping like a baby. Yeah. Quick, now get that gag over his mouth. I got my gun on him. You all set? Yeah. All right. Now. I got him. Hiya, Blackie. You know me, huh? Got a gag on good and tight, Joe. Blackie sees my gun. He won't tie nothing fancy. Okay, Pete. You'll have to chew and swallow the gag to get rid of it now. No use trying to say anything, Blackie. That gag's talk proof. Get the, get the idea, Pete. Yeah, most guys do. All right, Blackie. Over to that desk there. Go on, get out of bed. Go on, you heard him. Get over there. Okay, Blackie, now pull out the chair and sit down at that desk. Go on, sit down. Give him that pad and pencil, Joe. Sure. All right, then, Blackie. Write a little note to your pal, Shorty. And make it look like everything's okay. You ain't doing nothing. Go on, Blackie, right. Well, didn't you hear him? He says right. R-I-T-E, right. No more rough stuff, Joe. He's writing. Yeah, I know, but what? Tell you in a minute. All right, that's making it quick, Blackie. Let's have a look at that. You hold a gun on him, Joe. Sure. What's the note say, Pete? I have been called to Chicago on a case. Don't worry about me. Everything is going very swell. Now, that seems to be okay, Blackie. Thanks. I don't think anybody will come looking for you. <laughs> Until it's too late. Okay, Joe. Do it. Okay, Pete. He's knocked out. Now, let's carry him out. Oh, Blackie ain't down at the Turkish Bear, Tony? No, Shorty, he ain't anywhere around here. Oh, gosh. I wonder where he is. I call all over town. Nobody ain't seen him. Well, why not try his apartment? Try it? I'm in it. Oh. Well, I know one more place to call him find him, maybe. All right, thanks, Tony. Okay, sure. Hello, Shorty. Oh, gee, Inspector Friday. Hey, you, you seen Blackie? Huh? No, I've been looking for him all morning. Gosh, where is he? Don't you know? Well, I know where he ain't. In Chicago. Because he leaves a note saying he was in Chicago and it's a phony. Let's see the note. Sure. Yeah. I've been called to Chicago on a case. Don't worry about me. Everything is going very swell. What's funny about that? Well, if Blackie was gone someplace, he'd have told me. Oh, Miss Wesley. And he didn't tell neither of us. How do you know he didn't tell Miss Wesley? Because I phoned and she didn't know nothing about it. She says the note's a phony, too. Oh, come in. Hello, Shorty. Hi, Miss Wesley. Find Blackie yet? No, I haven't, Shorty. Not anywhere. Hello, Inspector. Look, Miss Wesley, what's Blackie up to? He was in my office yesterday while I was up, and he told Rollins he'd be in again this morning to take me to the money stolen from the Eggersville Bank. Gee, how do you find out where the Johnson Mob stash huh? I don't know. But I bet you anything, I know where it is right now. You do? Sure. The same place Blackie is, and that's gone. He found out where it was, grabbed it, and skipped. Oh, you know that's not so, Inspector. Yeah. Shorty, you said Blackie left a note. Matthew. Oh, sure, sure. Here it is. Uh, I've been called to Chicago on a case. Don't worry about me. Everything is going very swell. That's a strange way of putting it. Yeah? What's wrong with it? Well, nothing, maybe. But I have a hunch this note is trying to tell us something. Look, Inspector. Are you sure you got Blackie's message exactly as he left it with Rollins? In plain English, Blackie told Rollins he'd be in my office this morning. Well, why don't you call Rollins and check just to make sure? What? And waste more time. Please, Inspector. No. All right, then I'll make the call myself. Yes. Get me police headquarters, Inspector Faraday's office. Yes, ma'am. I tell you, Miss Wesley, this is just a waste of time. When Blackie isn't sure of something, he checks it. Now, I'm just doing what he would do. Well, why don't you do what Blackie's just done? Disappear. Ah, oh, you don't mean that, Inspector. Did your party? Hello. Sergeant Rollins, this is Mary Wesley. Oh, yes. Did Blackie tell you that he'd see Inspector Faraday in his office this morning? That's right. Well, where had Blackie been just before he came into the office? Did he say? Oh, no, he didn't say, Miss Wesley, but uh, I know where he was just the same. He just got the woman's attention cells where he was talking to Carolyn Johnson of the Johnson Mob. Oh, thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Inspector, why are you holding Carolyn Johnson? Hmm? I thought you'd arrested the entire mob and sent them to prison months ago. We just picked her up. We think she knows where her brother hid the money he stole from the Eggersville Bank. You think she told Blackie where the money was hidden? How should I know? Well, I know how we can find out. 
Yeah, how? By going down to jail and asking Carolyn Johnson. Now, wait a minute, Miss Wesley. I'm taking charge of this. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Inspector. And I know how we can find out. Oh, wonderful, Inspector. How? By going down to jail and asking Carolyn Johnson. Now, I wonder why I didn't think of that. Uh, we want to see Carolyn Johnson, Matron. Of course, Inspector Faraday. This way. How's she behaving, Matron? Since she had her visitor last night, quite well. Um, was Blackie her only visitor? Yes, he was, Miss Wesley. No other callers, huh? Only a man who brought her a package from the drugstore. He said it was from Boston Blackie. I opened it and took it to her. What was in it? Just soap, a comb, some chewing gum, and toothpaste. Here's Miss Johnson's cell. Hmm, she seems to be asleep. That's all there is to do in jail. I suppose you'd like to go inside and talk to her. Yeah, we would. If she'll tell us where the money's hidden, Inspector, we can go there, find the money, and maybe Blackie's too. I tell you, Blackie skipped with the money. Okay, Miss Johnson, wake up. You have visitors. Hmm. She sure sleeps tight. Miss Johnson. Come on, Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson, wake up. Wait a minute. Huh? Look closely, Inspector Faraday, and I don't think you'll bother trying to wake her up. She's dead. <laughs> You can take the gag off Blackie's mouth now, boss. Ah, oh, Doc, I'm going to leave it on. Make him write his answers, if any. This mm. isn't a soundproof room, and he might want to yell. I'll uh, keep a gun in him for you. Mm. Yeah, he's coming around from that coconut jaw I gave him. As soon as he's completely conscious, you can start asking him questions. Got a pad and pencil for him? Mm. Sure, right on the table in front of him. Come on, Blackie, snap out of it. All he's done is stick you with a needle. You're okay. Mm. Eh, he looks the same. I think your truth serum is a bust, Doc. Hey, he's not supposed to look any different. Go ahead, talk to him. He's awake now. Hello, Blackie. Mm. Recognize me, huh? Sure, I'm Bill Jefferson. He, he, he knows you. He knows you all right. Keep a gun on him, Doc. He's pretty tricky. He's covered. Go ahead. The truth serum should be working now. I wonder. Mm. You want to know why you're here, Blackie? Well, a Johnson mob pulled a fancy bank job in Eggertsville last year. Got a nice haul. But the cops grabbed the whole gang before they could do anything with it. The money's stashed, and I think you know where. Mm-hmm. The only member of the Johnson mob who didn't get sent up right away was Carolyn. Now, you talked to her in jail last night, I know, because I had a man following you. She told you where the gang hid the money, didn't she? Answer him, Blackie. Answer him. Write it out on that pad of paper. Come on, Blackie. Where's the Akersville bank money hidden? Where? Blackie, write it down. Look, he's just sitting there. That truth serum is no good. No, I tell you, it is. Keep on asking. He, he's just fighting against telling the truth, that's he looks all. from here like he's winning. Don't you tell him to, to write the answer down on that pad. Go on. Keep, keep after him. Maybe I can beat it up. No, him. no, no, no. Just, just keep asking him that question. Where's the Eggersville money hidden? Where did Johnson stash it? Mm-hmm. See? See, he's trying to answer. You mean he's just trying to talk? No. Doc, that serum's a flop. No, no, here, here, let me try, boss. Blackie. Blackie. Write the answer to this question. Where did Johnson hide the money he took from the Eggersville bank? Hey, he's writing. I told you he would. Write it all out, Blackie. All of it. Hey, he's finished. Grab the pad before he changes his mind. Uh, don't worry. He has no control over his mind. What do you write? He wrote, Johnson hid the money in the well on the first farm north of Owensboro. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. Blackie finds out from Carolyn Johnson where the Johnson mob hid the money they stole from the Eggertsville bank. So he is kidnapped by another gang, given the truth serum, and forced to tell the location of the loot. Meanwhile, Mary, Shorty, and Inspector Faraday are frantically searching for him. To complicate matters even more, Carolyn Johnson is found dead in, of all places, jail. As we return to our story, Mary and Shorty are in Blackie's apartment, trying to find something else that will tell them where they can locate Blackie. Oh, gosh, Miss Wesley, I can't find nothing. Neither can I, Shorty. Oh, golly. What would Blackie do right now if he were looking for me? Gee, I don't know. I'd be just fine, you, that's all. But don't ask me how. No, no, seriously. What would Blackie do? Well, don't look at me, Miss Wesley. I'm even dumber than you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 
You know, I think Blackie would take the one clue he had and he would work on it until it made some sense. Yeah, but we don't have no clue. We have the note he left. It must be some kind of clue, Shorty. If only we could figure it out. You, uh, you got the note, huh? Oh, yes. It's right here in my pocket. Well, what was it he wrote? All right, I'll read it again. I have been called to Chicago on a case. Don't worry about me. Everything is going very swell. Everything is going very well. You know, I think that's the clue. What, is it cold or something? It's not cold, but it's something. If I could just... Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Miss Wesley? Yes. This is Inspector Faraday. Still trying to find your boyfriend? Yes. Well, I just wanted to tell you that money wasn't the only reason he skipped. And what's more, you better hope we never find it. Why? Because Carolyn Johnson was killed by poison chewing gum that Blackie sent to her in a package. Now, how do you like that? I don't like it, Inspector, and it's not true, and you know it. I know Blackie sent her a package from the Waltham drugstore. I know it contained poison chewing gum. I know Carolyn Johnson died from poison chewing gum, and I know Blackie skipped. What else do you want me to know? Who really killed the Johnson girl? Blackie did. Because then he'd be the only one on the outside who knew where the Eggettsville money was hidden. Oh, Inspector, who delivered the package from the drugstore? I don't know. I'm trying to find out now. Well, if I were Blackie, I'd find out too, wouldn't I? If you were Blackie, you'd claim you were going to tell me inside of ten minutes. Well, I'm only Blackie's friend, Inspector, so maybe you better give me twenty. Mm. This rain's awful. Hurry up, Doc. Okay, Doc. Mm. Help me out of this well. The wall's slippery. This bag of dough is heavy. Oh, come on. Mm. Grab my hand. Oh, thanks. Thanks for pulling me up. Come on, Doc. Get away from the edge. Let's open that rubber bag. Oh, what's the hurry, boss? <laughs> you know, this is the dough from the Eggersville Bank. It's down in the bottom of the well. Just as Blackie said here, neither would we. Oh, Shut up, Blackie. We're not taking that gag off your mouth till we're good and ready. Here's your knife, Doc. Slit open the bag. Can, can we take it over this? This is a heck of a cold rain. I want to see a lot of cold cash. Come on, slit it open. Okay. Just up the side. We can put the dough in this suitcase. All right. Uh, there. There, yeah. Look at that dough. Must be 50,000. Yeah. Thanks, Blackie. Yeah. Keep that gun on him, boys. Don't let him try anything. And dump the dough in this suitcase, Doc. Okay. <laughs> Just look at it, poor out. Thanks, Blackie. I sure got to hand it to you. Don't thank Blackie. Thank that truth serum. That's what did the trick. Yeah, I guess I got to hand it to you, Doc. Here, one of you guys, close the suitcase and take it back to the car. What you want me to do with his rubber bag? I right, toss it back in the well. Okay. And your knife. Hmm? Wipe the prints off it and toss it in the well, too. Sure thing. There. And now to take care of you, Blackie. No, no, look, boss, don't kill him. That'll only give us trouble. I'm not going to kill him, Doc. I'm going to leave him here at the bottom of the well. Plug him, Pete. Don't let him fall. That's right. Oh, I see. He's going to die of natural causes, eh? Yeah. From water on the knee. Toss him in, boy. <laughs> Miss Wesley, there's Shorty. Oh, Shorty, where are you? Look, you told me to get down to the wall from drugstore and talk to the clerk who delivered a package to the Johnson thing, huh? Yes. Well, here I am, but the clerk won't talk. Why not? Well, he won't talk enough even to tell me that. Oh, dear, we're not getting anywhere, are we? I guess about the only way we're going to find Blackie is to ask Blackie where he is. Shorty, what does Blackie do when people won't talk? Well, Blackie, people talk. Hey, I-, I got a gun. I could persuade the clerk. Now, wait a minute, I'll tell you what. You get the clerk and wait outside the drugstore for me. I'll get Blackie's car and pick you up. We have to get some information from him. Yeah, but how? I don't know yet. Well, I've always heard that money talk. Well, if Blackie were here, he'd say, let's give that clerk some money and hear what it has to say. Now, look, friend. You like working in that drugstore, don't you? Sure I do. Well, then tell us who delivered that package to the jail. I told you, I did. Yeah. How much did somebody pay you to say that? Nobody paid me anything. Somebody took that package away from you and delivered it to the jail. Isn't that true? Look, I don't have to talk. You can't do anything to me. No, but I can do something for you. Yeah? If you'll talk, I'll pay you twice what you were given not to talk. Yeah? How much were you paid? Ten dollars. I'll pay you twenty. Twenty bucks, huh? That's right. Okay. A man did stop me. Said he delivered the package. He gave me ten bucks, so I let him deliver it. You know what was in that package? Sure, I wrapped it up. What was in it? 
Uh, a comb, a bar of soap, and a tube of toothpaste. No chewing gum? No chewing gum. Thanks. That's sure going to gum up Faraday's case against Blackie. <laughs> Yeah, Miss Wesley, you're right. The same guy who took the package away from that clerk brought the poison gum to the Johnson girl. Maybe Blackie didn't skip. Oh, anybody who's clever enough to kill a girl inside a jail is maybe clever enough to kidnap Blackie, too. If we could only find him. I'm beginning to see what's happened now. The Johnson girl told Blackie where the money was hidden. Somebody got wise that she'd spilled, grabbed Blackie, and is trying to make him talk. Yes, but why would the Johnson girl tell Blackie where the money was? Well, she probably wanted Blackie to go get it and turn it over to the police. Then if Blackie was kidnapped, how do you explain this note that he wrote about going to Chicago? Oh, he was probably forced to write that. Mm-mm, I still think it's some kind of clue. You have it with you? Oh, sure, right here. Let me see it. Here. Now, now, that line at the end. Mm. Everything is going very swell. That, that just doesn't sound like Blackie. Inspector, mm. look how far away the letter S is from the rest of the word swell. See? Mm-hmm. It's almost attached to the word very. It could read, everything is going very well. Yeah, but so what? Inspector Faraday, did you hear what I just said? Sure. I said, very well. Going very well. You know what that could mean? Sure, that he's, that he's going to a place called very well. But there isn't any such place. But there might be a man whose last name is very, a, a, a farmer maybe, who has a well. I can check the records. How long will it take? I don't know. But however long it takes, we're going to do it in record time. <laughs> Well, Miss Wesley, those court records were right. This is Very's farm. Uh, this ought to be Very's well. Yes, it certainly should be. Yeah. Oh, listen. Have you, have you reached the bottom yet, Shorty? Yeah, Miss Wesley. I'm down in the water. Find anything? Uh, yeah, I have a second. <coughs> I think you have a lot of tight looking tight when I'm coming up. What have you found, Shorty? I'll show you in a second, Inspector. I wonder what it is. I'm beginning to suspect. There's still a lot of footprints around here, deep ones, as if someone was carrying a heavy load. You mean Blackie? Maybe. Prints are pretty fresh, or this rain would have washed them away. Hey, give me a hand, will you, please? Here, take oh, mine. Thanks. Uh, oh, there you are. Oh, Shorty, you are soaked. Yeah, it's all right, Miss Wesley. No, I, I won't get wet standing in the rain. What'd you find down there? Maybe I, I, I shouldn't show you. What is it, Shorty? Something of Blackie? Yeah, yeah, this. That's Blackie's hat. Yeah. Well, in the water. Oh, Blackie. Oh, Miss Wesley, I, I, I guess that... I, I, I know what you mean, Shorty. I know. Oh, thanks, but... thanks. I guess they put him in the well and kept him there until... until it was all over. I'll get him for this, Miss Wesley. I'll do it for you and for you, Shorty. And maybe you won't believe it, but for me, too. Inspector. Inspector, if you don't mind, could we go to Blackie's apartment? I don't know why, but I, I just... I think I know why, Miss Wesley. I think I know why. Open the door, will you, Shorty? Sure, Inspector. Seems funny coming to Blackie's apartment on here. Uh, go on in, Miss Wesley. Want to make some coffee, Shorty? I think we need it. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh. Is that a man sitting by the fireplace? Seems to be. But that's Blackie. Oh, darling. Come on, Blackie, talk. Blackie. Talk, you no good breath. I thought you were dead. I was just getting ready to celebrate. Sorry to disappoint you, Inspector. Very smart of you to follow the clue and know what I left. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Wesley did that. Say, Blackie, it's, it's good to see you. Thanks, Shorty. Good. It's, it's wonderful. You better think so. Come on, wise guy, what's the gag? You had me feeling sorry for you, and I wasn't liking it a bit. Oh, then you were in the well. For about an hour. Hey, boss. What happened to your verse? You stand in the rain for one hour and in the well for another. See what happens to your voice. Oh, darling, how did you ever get out of there? Well, they dropped the knife down before they dropped me down. I chiseled my way out. I used a knife to dig a regular ladder up the inside of the well by trying out a brick every few feet. Pretty clever, Black. Pretty clever, Blanky. Got you out, but it didn't get anything else. The Eggettsville bank money is gone, probably for good this time. And so are the guys who stole it. Oh, the money, Faraday. You'll find it in a suitcase in the other room. What? And down at headquarters. 
You'll find the guys who did that thing and stole the money. Oh, God. I delivered them personally. Well, I'll be... You'll be happy to know I also have Carolyn Johnson's killer for you. How'd you know she was dead? Well, Pete and Joe, two of the men I left for you at headquarters, talked about it out at Ferry's well. Pete's the one that took her, the poison gum. But if you're a smart cop, you can indict them all for murder. Well, I'll be... Be a smart cop, Faraday. Or is that too tough for you to do? Hey, that, that's wonderful. Everybody's happy now, huh? That, except you, boss. You lost your birth. Yes, sure did. <laughs> but Blackie made a pretty good exchange. He found a killer. <laughs> Welcome back. I have to say I wished I had more information on the way this particular show came down. This isn't the only episode that featured a weak-voiced um, Richard Comer. Uh, this episode really cleverly avoids having Blackie speak until the last uh, few minutes. This is definitely a different approach to the pro to the problem, which it, it does seem is kind of obvious, that uh, Richard Comer's voice is not quite up to snuff. And so they write a Blackie Light episode where Blackie has, hardly has to appear at all. I do wonder why they didn't just delay uh, recording it since this was first run uh, syndication. But from what I have been able to gather from the history, it seems like these were being sent out fairly quickly uh, for local air on New York radio. Of course, Richard Comer would have a lot of opportunities for his voice to go haywire. Uh, he was uh, active on the stage, and he was also, as I mentioned before, the co-host of a uh, very popular uh, weekday uh, 
radio uh, chat show with his uh, wife, uh, columnist Dorothy Kilgarin. So he is having to talk a lot. So in one way, it's not really surprising if he uh, had that sort of uh, problem occur. At any rate, though, that will do it for today's episode of Boston Blackie. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Toller. And uh, next Thursday, another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become...